Hey guys, it's the patient toddler coming at you with another video and in this one we are going to talk about the Ecomi Omi price prediction for the end of the year and why it's so difficult to give one and why I am not giving a specific one today. But before we start, please keep in mind that I'm a crypto and NFT investor and not a financial advisor. So please do your own research before you ape into the Ecomi token. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider giving this video a like, subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about Ecomi and which price prediction you personally would give in the comments below. Also with the reasons why you think that is going to happen. At this point, I also want to thank my rare hodler family. These are the people that are either subscribed as a Patreon on my Patreon account or on this channel as a channel member and you will find the link in the description. So if you want to do more than subscribing, liking and commenting, you can find the link to that in the description. Now, as you can see here, I came out here to take this video and it's slightly raining with sun in combination and behind me, we can see the rest of a rainbow there. I have taken a video before that I will display in here while I'm talking and as the sun is already going away and probably there are too many trains passing on this train track, I will search for a better place to take the content of this video. Okay, so I believe I found a good place for us to start talking about a possible or impossible Ecomi Omi price prediction for the end of the year. And here is why I think it's, it's not so easy and I will outline all the aspects that are coming to my mind right now, why it is not so easy to give this prediction. And the reason why I make this video is because under almost every Ecomi Omi video, I have been asked, what is your end of year prediction? So yeah, as you can see, I have chosen a path through yellow flowers on both sides. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the plant Raps in German. I'm, I'm not familiar with the English name for that. And I think this, this one is used for salad oil, for biofuel and all this good stuff. And in these times, it's probably necessary to create your own biofuel uh, from the field. So anyways, we are going to walk through these flower fields and talk Omi. Okay, so a lot of people are desperate about the current Omi price and I get it. I also have an average of a little bit below 0 0.005, so half a cent uh, in euros actually. And um, this is obviously not satisfying because right now we are below 50% and in the red and in my personal opinion, this is a good time to buy, but nothing of this is obviously financial advice. So here is why I'm not worried and what could be a possibility um, to put a price prediction or whatever price prediction that you find out there into perspective. So since two, more than two years, the markets are shaken by black swan events and by things that just were not supposed to occur, but they are always happening. So we had the pandemic, we had this plague, we had consecutive lockdowns and expansive fiscal policies for the markets, saving companies that shouldn't have been saved, saving other companies that actually deserve to be saved. But anyways, we are at the point where we printed a lot of money, where we passed two years of economical stagnation, where supply chains suffered a ripple effect. And we can see that at the moment still China is closing down ports. And we see the, if you go to marinetraffic.com, we can see the container ships, the vessels stacking up in the front of those ports. And this is obviously a, all not good. This leads to big supply chain issues. Car manufacturers cannot get their stuff out. Technology manufacturers cannot get their stuff out. And over the whole 
time of the pandemic or at least in the in the second part of this time we have seen that investors were getting rid of tech stocks and the playbook and there's always a playbook like for, for doctors there's a playbook when they're analyzing patients and they see certain symptoms they're shooting for what to do first beat it with an antibiotic or just wait and see how it develops and so on so there's a playbook for almost every composition of symptoms for doctors and there is a certain type of playbook for wall street investors for venture capital investors for portfolio managers and yeah for, for almost everyone uh, that invests in a bigger scale and manages the money of other wealthy people and this playbook says if the crisis threatens or tends to be prolonged or we are going to a recession and so forth, we should get rid of risky investments and of tech stocks. And that's what they did. And what is considered a tech stock shouldn't be considered a tech stock, but is in fact considered as something like a tech stock is Bitcoin and altcoins like ethereum cardano and so on and also unfortunately our investment which is ecomi so that means even if it was in a bigger way it's funds venture capital investor or so portfolio they would have kicked it out to move this for their stakeholders for the shareholders into safer assets or safer regions so the playbook for Wall Street says you get rid of these riskier investments, the ones with the big uh, potential to the upside in, in the good markets when we're in bull markets and you move it to government uh, titles, uh, you move it to gold um, and that's so rational because Bitcoin is more considered a tech stock than gold but actually it should be considered digital gold and should be where everyone moves their money to. But we are so early in Bitcoin, even though you wouldn't believe it when you see the price, that people see the volatility, that it's still being manipulated, that it's still not regulated. And this is one of the biggest aspects that for most countries is not regulated. So there's a lot of uncertainty how to treat it or there is even... Um, taxation problems because no one knows exactly how it works in certain countries so that's the reason why companies are not shifting their money into bitcoin which should be considered digital gold okay so based on that why is it so difficult to give a price prediction for ecomi because it's difficult to give a price prediction for bitcoin for the end of the year and that is uh, for those reasons that I said before. So we have the war going on. We have the supply chain issues. We have uncertainty about rate hikes from the Fed. We have uh, the mo monetary policies of the European Central Bank of China in the mix with Russia and the US as the supplier of most of these essential microchips and, and stuff like that. So, Already, if we consider, if we agree together on that, it's very impactful how these things develop on the Bitcoin price and therefore also on the price exponentially on the price of the altcoins. Then we can agree on that the end of year price prediction depends on how these things are exactly in the end of the year. So then I ask, how many rate hikes then will we have until the end of the year? Will Putin let the Ukraine be a sovereign country or will he conquer it all? Will he go further against other countries in the West or will he only get the Donbass region and uh, the Crimea and so on under his control and stay calm for the next years to come? And if you cannot answer that, how can we? So I, I don't have an answer to that because I know from uh, past experience, like the war in Syria, that these things can stretch out, that they, that they can last for years to come. Also, I don't know when uh, supply chain issues are resolved. I don't know when China will stop 
putting a full lockdown on cities of 20 million inhabitants of things like Shenzhen, very important ports for all of these container vessels and carriers, I don't know when this will be resolved. I don't know how inflation will develop in the future in the European zone and worldwide. I don't know that. So this is one part. But And OMI is driven by the price of Bitcoin. We have seen that. OMI is not bear market proof. In fact, OMI is dependent on the whole development of the crypto market as all the other old coins are at the moment. And this is a bullish sign because we are so early that this still happens. And Ecomi is driven or should be driven by fundamentals that are specific to Ecomi. And these fundamentals are not effectively working at the moment. And what I mean by that, two videos ago, so if you consider the live stream with Kelly, which you should watch because it was super interesting about how whales are behaving in these markets. One video before that, I discussed all the burn mechanics that are influencing or are going to come for Ecomi. So let's talk about those fundamentals. So Ecomi is, a, first of all, an NFT collectible play that holds all the licenses. So the, the fundamentals for Ecomi are perfectly fine and nothing has changed with regards to those fundamentals. The other side is that the Vivi app, which I meant by uh, holding the, those fundamentals, the Vivi app uh, is kind of decoupled at the moment from the token. So that means Vivi does not really give value at the moment for the token because there's no interaction with the reserve wallet and circulating supply. If you want to know more about these interactions and how it exactly works, go back to videos and watch the video about the burn mechanics. So we have outlined in that video that there are up to, I think, six or seven different burn mechanics from different projects that are theoretically impacting the circulating supply of OMI. So none of these are implemented right now. The only thing that is implemented for ECOMI is that it is a currency on the IMX marketplace. Now, when we consider that, we have almost no utility. And if a utility token has almost no utility, there shouldn't be too much price action going on. So the burn mechanics, they are important to have the scarcity effect onto the economy token. So right now we are talking about a fully diluted token supply of 313 billion tokens. And this with a market cap of, if I multiply it directly with the current price, this would result in a market cap of 626 million euros. So you have to calculate a little bit on top for getting the dollar price here. Okay, so if the burn mechanics would take effect by the middle of this year, so let's say in June, July, August, somewhere, then there would be a possibility of burning a couple of billion and let's say we are burning 3 billion OMI tokens, so that would leave us with 310 billion OMI tokens and our market cap and price would be slightly higher. So everything depends not only on the global situation, but also on the execution of the driving factors of value for ECOMI. And I would say from all the factors that I've outlined in the last video, the OMI utility program is the most important one because it's enabling staking rewards within the VV app by locking up OMI tokens. And we all know TVL is the biggest driver of value that you can get. So in total, here's your answer. We need clarity about the execution for these factors on the OMI token. And we need clarity on the global situation and whether we will see another bull run or if we will be in a bear market by the end of the year to be able to give a final economy price prediction. So if we think that we can agree that there is not a possibility to give a price prediction that makes sense. So right now we are at 0 0.0025, so quarter of a cent. And I think everything from one to two cents 
in a bullish case is possible by the end of the year. So this is a little bit lower than I expected before. Before I thought if we get another bull run, then we would go to five to six cents from where we were uh, during the time of the whole Disney drops and so on. And in a bear case scenario, we could be even lower than this price. If we drop into a bear market, into a recession, into global disaster, no one would care about the token at the moment that holds absolutely no utility. So in that bearish case, I could see 0 0.000, so three zeros, and then like whatever number. Uh, so below even 10% of a cent. Um, that would be for me the perfect scenario for accumulating more OMI and for others it would be just horrible because they have already so much money locked up into OMI so I don't know so the, the, the answer to the question end of year price prediction 2022 is bullish scenario one to two cents with burns already going on and stuff like that and some exchanges um, and bearish scenario is a couple of zeros and a number. So th this is all you can get. And um, I know that people will continue to ask for a price prediction because they want some factor to, to, to calculate how much do I need to make this and that profit. And when if we go from there, 10x, 100x, it doesn't matter at the moment. It's more important that we get as someone who doesn't have enough OMI entry chances and the possibility to invest. But um, yeah, since there is more rain coming in the background, uh, I like this view more to, towards the sunset. Um, I will stop this video right here. It's just an explanation how complicated it is to make a price prediction, an accurate one. I'm sorry that it's not possible to give a clearer one or even one that, that does make any sense. Um, yeah, and with that said, wherever you are on the world, have yourselves a great morning, evening, day, night or afternoon, and see you in the next video.